Right, so today I want to talk about HTTP verbs and what are the different methods that we can use with HTTP requests. So I've got a pretty basic Express server here and what I've done is on top of just requiring Express and then down at the very bottom I'm doing my listen. In between there I'm using all the different methods that Express gives me for dealing with these different HTTP verbs get, post, put, patch, delete, head, options. There are a lot more, but these are the ones that you're going to use the most often, these seven. So I'm going to talk about these. Now, first we need to understand that when you make a request from a web server, it could be something as simple as I've gone into my browser and I've typed in an address and I've hit enter. That is sending a request from the browser off to a web server somewhere. Or you could be using a tool like Postman. And in Postman, I'm entering in a URL that I'm going to request. I'm choosing which one of these HTTP verbs I want to use. I say that and I click send. I send the request off to the web server and then I get a response back. So what are these verbs and why are we using them? Well, each one of these verbs has sort of a, a special meaning behind it. There's the end point, which is the URL with the path on the end of it. This is my route when I combine a verb and an endpoint. I can use this same endpoint, the same URL, with different verbs to get different responses. So get, what is the meaning behind get? Get means really just read. I want to read some data. So I'm sending the request. I want to get some data back. That's it. I'm only sending this request. I'm not sending any additional information. I'm not sending a whole bunch of form data or something like that. With post, in the post, I'm going to be sending off a request, but I'm also going to be sending something from Postman, from the web server. I'm sending, sorry, not from the web server, from the client, from the browser. I'm sending some data. A user has filled out a form. They're saying, okay, I need to create a brand new thing. Post means you're creating something new. So you can see in my code here, I'm using rec.body. So this rec is our request object. Inside of it, there's a body property and we can send off the request and include data inside that body. So I'll show you the, the client side code for that. If we jump over to my HTML file here, I've got a little script inside of it. Here's my endpoint. This is the URL I'm going to request. And then I'm going to create a new request object and I'm going to pass that to my fetch method to send a request to the server. Inside of here, we've got method. I could say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do a post request. So to do a post request, I need the endpoint. And I also need to create some headers and some data. So I'm going to say, I'm sending some JSON data with my fetch call to the server. This is the piece of data that I'm going to send to the server. Here's the URL. Method is going to be post. And then I'm also going to include this header that I created and something called body. That is going to be this data. I'm taking the stringified version of this, so it's a JSON string, and that is going to be the body of my request being sent off to my Express web server that's running. Express is going to say, hey, you I just received a post request to this endpoint. So this is my route, my method and my endpoint together. That's a route. And inside of here, I can access rec.body.name. So I'm getting the name property from inside of body. Then what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm looking for the highest ID that I've got inside of my data. I'm adding one to that, setting a date, putting it together as an object, and I'm pushing it onto an array. All right, so get is for reading, post is for creating, Get could be to read the entire list, or it could be to read one specific thing. If I pass in a number here, so if I've got a variable here called ID, 
if somebody sends a get request and they add a number to the end of it, I'm going to give them just the data about that one specific item instead of the entire list, which is what this endpoint with get does. So get for read, post is for create, put and patch are very similar. Both put and patch have to do with updating. So I'm passing an ID number with both of them to say, I want to update this. Now there's a very slight difference between the two of them. You can also almost use them interchangeably, but with put, we have the option and we would have to code this, but we have the option to say, if the record doesn't exist, then I'm going to create it. So great, you've sent me the data inside the body. I've got some JSON data. You want me to look at the ID and then do an update, but then you discover, oh, okay, that thing doesn't exist yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new record for it. Now, how you want to deal with that, if you want to take that ID, if it doesn't exist, create the new object with that ID, fine. If you want to generate a new ID and insert it with that new ID and send that back, that works as well. Patch is an update, but it never does an insert. It's only doing an update. And if the ID doesn't exist, it says, okay, hey, there was a problem. I'm going to send back an error code saying, nope, I couldn't do that. Delete, as you might expect. If you're passing in an endpoint, you're saying, I want to do a delete of this object. So we're deleting one of these channels. Now, I haven't done anything at all with authentication or saying whether or not somebody's allowed to do this. Right now, this is just wide open. Anybody in the world can send these requests and manipulate this data. Authentication is something that you would build on top of this or a side of this. You would add that as a step in the process where the person has to be authenticated before they can do any of these things. That's a whole other video, which I will be doing one in the uh, not too uh, distant future. Head, just like a get, it's reading, but really all we want are the headers. Head is used very often uh, if you want to just test and make sure that a resource works, if a resource is available. So I can send a, a head request, I get back the header to, with the status 200. That tells me, yep, it's all good. I can use that. Options, somebody's talking to a resource, they're talking to an endpoint and saying, what am I allowed to do here? And in this case, we will set the headers for allow we list off all of the possible HTTP verbs, which is what this is all about. This is the list of things that I'm going to let somebody do. Now, I don't have patch in this list. I could add patch into this list as well and say, these are the things that you're allowed to do. Access control allow origin. This is my cores header. So I'm allowing cores on my server. Uh, Express has some uh, cores middleware that we can inject. I'll do another video about that in the future as well. Content length is zero. So very important with options, we're not sending any content. Just like the head, we're not sending any content. But we are specifying this allow. Okay, so these are the different HTTP verbs. Um, if I start up my server now, let's save this and we'll run the server. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder here. Okay, our server has started up. It's running. Now, this one right here, this client.html, uh, I can start that one up on the server as well. Here, we'll say go live with this. So we've jumped over to the browser to take a look at this. We'll take a look at our console and our network tab here. Uh, we can refresh this again. There we go. Now we can see there's three things that happened. One was the HTML file was requested. That was over port 5500. So that's the live server from VS Code that's loading that one. Then this next one here. This is the one to our API that we're building. And you can see the method was options. Options is a 
pre-flight request. This is the request that the browser does, sending it to the server before it does any fetch calls. It wants to make sure that everything's okay. And you can see we did get our access control allow origin header coming back. That's good, that works. But we, if we look in the console, you can see there are errors. And the error has to do with it being blocked. Now, it says there was a cores issue. We had the access control allow origin header, but because I uncommented the request header and set content type, that's the one that's being blocked. So it's trying to do a, um, a get request with a content type and this access control allow origin. The two of them aren't working out together. They're not happy about that, but not important for what we're doing right now. It's really just understanding that there are these different methods. And let's do the same thing over here so we don't have the browser's security issues. We're doing a get on this one. If I send, here we have, I know it's really tiny on this screen for you guys, but on this, there we go, that's a little bit better. Inside of here, this is my response. I get all of this data coming back. So that's my JSON response for a get. If I do a post, remember post means create. So I'm going to come in here and go to the body and say, I'm going to send some JSON data. So body is going to be some raw data. And I need to send an object in here that is going to have a name property. And I believe the other one is last updated. And that's some timestamp. So I'm just going to make up a number like that. There we go. Now I am doing a request to this endpoint using the post method. And this is the data that I'm going to send. I click on send. And now down here, there it is. My status that came back was a 201, which is created. And here is the response. There's the data that I sent. And this is the brand new ID. That's the one that came back from the server. I didn't send an ID. It created the record, created the ID, and sent that back to me. So if we jump back in here, we can see this is what's going on inside of here. We started it. There was a get request. And this was the data that it sent back. I'm just console logging all my get and post requests. There was the data that it sent back the first time. Then we posted this data and then its response was to send a brand new version of the list or the response was just the new object but i put a brand new uh, i console logged the new version of the list and that's the idea behind http verbs we are simply taking an endpoint there we go so we're taking an endpoint like this and it could be different endpoints, but taking an endpoint and combining one of these verb methods with it, and that becomes a route. We can read, we can update, we can create, we can delete, or we can just test things. And that's what the head and the options are for. There are sort of preliminary tests that you can do from the server or from the client to the server. All right, I will leave a copy of the data file as well as my app.js file and this simple little web page so that you can play around with those uh, as you like. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Postman, I do have a couple of videos on my channel about Postman, but I will put a link to the Postman website down in the description for you as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And as always, thanks for watching.